Hello, occultists. I am Richard Bigley, and uh, with me in studio, I have... Elizabeth Stone. And you may be wondering, why is this episode showing up in the middle of your feed in the middle of the week? Well, guess what? This is a special trial episode where we promote the side project that I've been working on with my... Dear friend. Dear you can, friend. You can admit it. Okay, my dear friend, <laughs> Elizabeth Stone. I hope, are you releasing it on a Wednesday, on a hump day? Hey. Hey, yes, it's a hump day. It's a hump day, and you get a sexy episode. With Sex with Stone. So you can catch us on all your podcast apps, uh, Podcast Addict, Google Podcasts, Spotify, etc. Just look up Sex with Stone. Just yeah. subscribe to us, listen to our episodes. What have we done so far? Uh, we've covered a lot of bases. Are you interested in public sex? Learning about how to keep yourself squeaky clean, history of pubic hair, um, awkward conversations. <laughs> we got it all. <laughs> we have it all. So uh, subscribe to our podcast. And uh, yeah, well, here's a special episode on uh, the history of pornography. And uh, and have a consensual week. Enjoy. Enjoy. <laughs> All right. Here's a warning for you. This podcast contains sexuality and language. Listener discretion is advised. But you probably knew that because it's literally called, get this, Sex with Stone. <laughs> I hope you enjoy the show, darling. Well, hello there. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm doing well. Good. My name is Elizabeth Stone. And I am Richard Bigley. It's so nice to meet you. <laughs> and this is Sex with Stone. Today, we are going to talk about the history of pornography. Hooray! Yeah. <laughs> Do we get free samples? I mean, I, I yeah, we're like, we're going to post some photos on our um, Instas and, and okay. ooh, are you making soup? Slow cooking chili. Oh, it smells delicious. I can chicken smell chili, it. Chicken chili, yeah. Ooh, chicken chili. Yeah. <laughs> it does smell now. Yeah, <laughs> all of a sudden it just looks like wafted in my nose. And I was like, mm, what is this? <laughs> the chili's like, I like, I, I like history. <laughs> um, this was honestly one of the hardest things Bottoms. to... It, it was so hard uh, to research is what it was hard to do. Um, I looked at scholars, scholarly articles... Uh, not off Google, but from like legitimate sites. I then I went into the Googles and I uh, was finding stuff because I like to stay away from Wikipedia and stuff like that, just because it's not actual sourced information. So it turns out that ever since uh, from the beginning of mankind, there has always been pornography, but it really depends on who's in charge, and the censorship they have at the time. So there's kind of been a little uh, front and back with what exactly is pornography, what is just eroticized art in history. For instance, um, in and also, also, it's really hard to find anything about pornography from anywhere else other than Europe and America. And that's the... Uh, the uh, infestation of the white European male. Just because, like, first off, things got burnt and censorship, and when things happened, they just destroyed masses of artwork and literature and stuff like that. Second part, it's super hard to find stuff that, you know, is... It did somebody else from, say, India have stuff absolutely they did but was it regarded as pornography because of who was in charge or what what religion was you know in place there who knows you know 
what the dominant culture and social norms were at the time. At the time, yeah. yeah. So what was considered pornography in some was actually not depicted like that in other cultures. Um, <clears throat> it's hentai and it's art. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. It very well could. Man. I could never get over like the explosions that happened on there. You know what I mean? Like it was like a geyser of. Have you watched hen any hentai? No. Oh, oh, do it. Okay. Do it, and then we'll have this discussion. We'll but do an episode on hentai. Oh, we could. Yeah. Why That's not? An idea. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So anyway, I'm going to start with outside of Europe uh, because Europe is where I have most of my information from and I really tried to make it, um, what is it when you bring a whole bunch of things together? Inclusive. There we go. <laughs> Intersectional. <laughs> yeah, I tried to make it really inclusive for everybody, but it's, it's hard uh, when you go back that far and when your culture isn't of a European nature. Um, so out, we're going to start with outside of Europe. And in India, there was statues uh, of Vishnu holding the breast of Lakshmi. And when European visitors came over, they were absolutely appalled that this is how they were representing. Because it was on the side of a temple. And they were absolutely appalled that this is how they were represent, being represented as. And this is at like, these were made at 950 to 970 is it AD now? We say AD and... AD and BCE. AD and BCE, okay. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> and then in Japan, they had a uh, highly developed culture of visual erotica, which was actually mainstream. So in the 17th century in that, pictures provided uh, were for sexual education. I am going to try to pronounce this properly. It is makura e which is called pillow pictures and part of the oh, Takugawa period, Takugawa period in 1603 to 1867, um, they actually were very, it was very mainstream to have these kind of like manuals for couples and just like, like it wasn't a bad thing to research uh, sexual education for people, right? Which I thought was really progressive, uh, as opposed to Europeans who were all like, condemn! <laughs> She's showing her heels. What a witch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Heathen! <laughs> um, so there's there's a bunch of color wood blocking prints, because uh, the interesting thing is, is that as technology progressed, the like pornography was like, oh, let's do it. Oh, what, you, you can take photographs now? Nudes, 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 nudes. <laughs> oh, there's video. Porn, 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 porn. <laughs> videos. Porn videos. Um, so, yeah. So then I'm going to flip flop back and forth because it took me forever and I went down this crazy rabbit hole. I'm going to reference the, uh, the, w e the website I went to uh, for this because there is so much beautiful art on there. Um so, back to here up. Uh, so, 1 AD, the poet Ovid wrote Ars Amatoria, which, was, which he was banned out of Rome and had to live the rest of his days in Greece. So, this is actually translated to the art of love, and it has been banned in the USA until 1926. 28, sorry. 1928. I don't, why do I make notes? I don't read them. <laughs> um, so novels and drawings came first. So erotic novels have been around since like the 1400s hmm. or is their earliest record. And from what I said, like, so as I said, so because of censorship, um, who's in charge and just the passage of time, pieces of, of historical erotica have been lost like so many giant pieces so we have there's there's it's really kind of staggered events and like information out there as to what's what you know and honestly you can't even even if you were not looking into cited scholarly materials 
um, to just Google, like I got, I just tried to Google stuff. I was like, hey, what is the golden age of pornography, right? It's not out there. I mean, you had to go on Wikipedia to look at it. And I was like, oh, well, this is untrustworthy information. So I tried to get the best one. Anyway, so novels and drawings came first. So around 1400 to 1500, popes were like, hey, no thank you, and burned it all. Um, and they started convicting dealers. So there were these people that um, tried to obviously like, they were book publishers and they were traders, book traders. And those are the people who would provide others with this sort of erotic material. Um, and yeah, so only a small amount of erotic entertainment before the 1900s actually survived. And even when people purchased anything, they obviously didn't report it because it was illegal. And the court records were incomplete. So anybody that was charged or or um, went to trial for dealing um, obscene materials, I believe it was called obscenities, was uh, they they didn't keep like great records on it either. So the 1700s is really when you learn about the the book and publish book publishers and traders. <clears throat> how would they how would they get their business? They would advertise as pseudonames in peri periodicals uh, through the post. <clears throat> so the types of materials that you'd be looking at uh, mostly was things like in um, 1748, it, John Cleveland wrote a book called The Memoirs of Women of Pleasure, but it's also known as Fanny Hill. And that is the oldest piece of erotica that is known to be out there right now. Um, yeah, there was actually one that was going to go up for sale that was actually like from the 1800s. Um, and that has been, ba that was banned until 1970, that book. And then you have Aristotle's masterpiece in 1684. That was basically a sexual health manual that was also banned. So I didn't want to get too, there There was so much, like, then there was this book on this date, and then three months later, there was this book on this date, and I was like... And then it was banned, and then it <laughs> was burned, and then that other one was banned, and yeah. then it was just, this other one was lost, and so on and so forth, I assume. Yeah, yeah, okay. and I was just like, we're not going to go down that rabbit hole. I'm basically naming the the names of books and people and whatnot that kept coming up over and over again mm -hmm. in, in what I was, was researching. So, uh, the, <laughs> I have traders and publishers, white European men, <laughs> cause obviously that's, that's all we really have the information of apart from what I previously said. So in England, you had William Dugdale who was in the mid 1800s, um, he was a huge name. He ended up going to jail multiple times for selling obscene materials and dying in one. That is how I would want to go to jail, I think, is for <laughs> selling obscene materials. For your giant stack of Playboys. That's right. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> um, then George Cannon was another man, uh, and he... When he died, his wife took over, which I thought was pretty cool. I, that's why I wanted to mention him, just because I wanted to say that his wife took over, because it was like all these men. <laughs> all right. Yeah. She took over the family business. She did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then uh, in Paris, there is Charles Cardington, and he actually had like a mistress, and he ha he was married more than once, and he went blind got into got put in asylum and died of syphilis which being blind and needing mental health treatment is mm -hmm. a sign of severe syphilis yeah <laughs> please treat yourself <laughs> um so my my favorite when i looked it up my favorite pictures because a lot of the pictures were basically anti-church there was a lot of which i found really interesting um just like a lot of people that were nuns or monks or whatever having orgies or having sex, you know? I'm sure it was a thing that happened, though. Oh, well, I mean, I 
I'm not I'm not gonna judge and I'm not gonna make assumptions, but it was definitely drawn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm I'm just saying I'm sure at some point in history there was a monk and nun orgy that happened at some point. I'm sure there was. We should Google that and we could report on monk nun orgies for an episode or something. <laughs> I don't know. Forty five minutes of various and then this monk was with this nun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so my favorite artwork is actually called Diableries. I'm probably not saying that at all correct. It was made in 1832. Uh, it was in Paris by Le Poitouven. Poit- Poitouven. It was made in 1830. They were they were made in 1832 in Paris by Le Poitouven. I apologize to this person because I am not saying it right, but this one actually depicted demons and i don't know i just thought it was, it was so it's so like giant penises in outfits w- walking and like or um a, a a giant penis ejaculating and the ejaculate is like demons coming out and it's just like that's what happens when you un- don't treat your syphilis <laughs> is that it feels like you're ejaculating demons and fire is it I don't know. I've never had it, but oh. <laughs> I have been told by my yeah. grade nine sexual education teacher oh. that it is apparently very painful. I'm not sure if she ever experienced such a thing, but I'm I'm sure it is, and you should be treated for. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Um. So then we get into the 1900s, and the 1900s is when movies and photos were invented. So like I said, photography was invented in 1826, and they were so excited about bringing on those, those nudes. So they were called French postcards, is what you would ask for, and they would give you nude photos. And it... Honestly, it reminds me of, you know, when you walk down the Las Vegas Strip and you have those people snapping yeah. the cards and it's and like nude photos you, and they're giving you these yes. like free, that's, in my mind, that's how I'm like, yeah, you want some of these French, here, 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 you want some of these French postcards? Every <laughs> time I have a friend that comes back from Vegas, they somehow collect these cards from, from the street vendors or whatever, and then just assume I want them. And so I've got quite a collection of these Las Vegas adult entertainment uh, cards in storage somewhere. You should collage something on it. <gasps> we should make a collage table. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah, because I love, but you still kept them. Like, they were given to you, you're like, I don't know, I don't know why you would give me these, but you still have them. I don't throw anything out. I'm a hoarder. It's a serious problem. Oh, yes. okay, okay. But <laughs> you did use them. You have them in your collection. You gave like me the a bedroom dragon. eyes there. I just saw the bedroom Like eyes. a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> um, excuse me. Uh, yeah, so French postcards, we have them. They're the nude photos. So we have a few people that were known for, and, and, and the information I get kind of flip-flops back and forth between, you know, uh, the photo photography and the film photography because they were both obviously happening at the same time so in night so albert arthur allen is a photographer and he was known to do boudoir photos as well as alfred cheney johnston who i believe was american and he would uh take photos of the ziegfeld foley's which was a name stolen from Foley's in Paris. Uh, so it was the, the American branch of it, basically. And wh- it, it was basically women doing a variety show. You know, gymnastics, singing, acting, out mm-hmm. stuff, whatever, right? But he would f- photograph them I- I- in boudoir photos and as nude models. I see. Mm-hmm. Um, so then we get into some... Uh, old uh, pornography films. So in Albert Kirchner in 1896 um, did, and, and again, I apologize, it is French, 
um, Le Coucher de la Marie. And that was Bedtime for the Bride, where she stripped on film. It was a, it was a black and white film, silent film, and she stripped for the uh, husband on their wedding night. And then in night, like then there was another big one in 1927, which was also a silent erotic, and it was called Forbidden Daughters. And then in 1927, there was a whole bunch that came out. So it ju- that was like the f- just one exploded of the- at that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was illegal to sell it. So basically, what happened was you would buy a um, a membership to a private theater. And they would, yes, and they would play these, you could see these movies there, but you had to pay, like, probably, I don't know, I'm not even going to guess, but it was private. Makes me think of, I don't know, it was, I believe there was some state, uh, or maybe it's a joke or something, but uh, where you couldn't sell marijuana from the storefront or whatever, but, you know, you could pay somebody to, like, a psychic to let you know where the marijuana you had was lost and where to go find it. So <laughs> you'd be paying the psychic, but you wouldn't be buying any marijuana. You just have the psychic tell you where to find the marijuana that you happen to misplace. That is an amazing loophole. Wow. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. That's exactly what it was. <laughs> okay. They, I mean, you're going to find loopholes everywhere. You know, you just got to be creative. <laughs> so then in the 1960s, uh, oh, hold on here. Do, 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 do. Okay. No, we're not going to talk about the 60s yet. But it was, so it was pretty much banned. Uh, and so you had to pay money for these private theaters. And I already did that. So then... Um, the original Vanity Fair, which is not, is separate from this, and this was in the early, like, 1900s, so they would show women in, uh, really baggy trousers, and you would have to, and then there was another magazine called Dawn, which would show a bit more erotic photos, um, and then in the, there was these comics that came out in 1937, and they were called Tijuana Bibles. And they were, they depicted popular cartoon characters and actors of the time engaged in immoral acts. So I love how from the beginning of time, there was uh, people who had fame uh, being mocked and made fun of. And there was nudity and sex being celebrated in various ways and also i forgot to mention kink there was so many pictures in that of of women dominating men and and um transsexuals and right from the 1800s it was so awesome to see like Yes, this has been happening. So people who are just trying to say like, oh, it's a fad. and nah, nah, nah. No. <laughs> this well, has been around since the beginning. Well, there was, uh, my understanding was there was a lot of research uh, done in Germany uh, prior to the rise of Hitler on, you know, sex and transgender, you know, transgender people from, you know, all sorts of aspects. And then, I mean, Hitler burned all of it uh, which you know kind of resets you back to square one because you can't fall back to somebody else's research after Mm -hmm. it's been destroyed but uh, yeah i mean it's like you said it's not a new thing it's happened you know it's been happening forever yeah and which is also kind of one of those things where you know kind of falling back to the the church you know i'm curious how many uh you know priests were transgender or something of that nature, you know. That was actually one of the one of the paintings I came across oh. was was a nun um, lifting up um, the habit. Okay. The habit's the whole body piece, right? I'm not really good with I'm Catholicism. Not either. But. Okay, I'm not sure if the habit is just the headpiece or if the habit's the whole piece. But lifting up the bottom piece and revealing that there is a penis there. And another nun on their knees 
waiting to receive. All right. Yeah. I'm sure it's happened in the past, to be quite honest. I mean, history, human history is like millennia. Depicted you know? by the art, it has happened. Exactly. <laughs> art, yep. art imitates reality, so I'm sure at some point. Absolutely. A lot of times it does. A lot of times it does, yeah. So um, then we get into, what did I skip here? Something about the 60s. Okay, yes. Okay, so... Um, I'm just going to say it now. In the 60s, uh, Denmark legalized pornography, and then that created a huge wave in the 60s. It was basically illegal everywhere else, so people, a lot of people were like, hey, we're just going to go to Denmark and do, do stuff, you know? You know, that makes me think of when I was in Denmark. Mm -hmm. Like, I crossed the border from Germany into Denmark, and, like, the first thing I see are like strip malls of pornography stores. Oh, wow. So like it's a very prevalent thing. You know, like you cross the, like I said, you cross the border and suddenly it's like pornography, XXX, pornography, and, and just like on and on and on. It seemed, I don't know, I didn't spend a whole lot of time in Denmark, but it seemed to be something that was, that was quite plentiful there, along with black licorice flavored candy, which I was not a fan uh. of. Oh, yeah. But Ugh. the pornography was probably okay. Yeah. Yeah. That would be very interesting to go see. Excuse me. Okay. Um, so then I know you're like, listen, Elizabeth, what about these porn mags? And let me tell you, we're here. So Playboy was the first one I found. Um, obviously, Hugh Hefner created it. And the first issue featured Marilyn Monroe in December of 1953. They sold out in two weeks and started a gigantic empire. Um, in 1969 is when Penthouse was created. And other um, Penthouse became more of like a niche into more hardcore porn, whereas Playboy was very um, just... just Soft core, you know, naked, naked women. Yes. As opposed to no actual sexual acts or mm -hmm. suggestions of sexual acts. Yes. Yeah. 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 And uh, and then others came, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, Hustler uh, came out in 1974. Um, Play Girl came out in 1973 because, you know, like, hey, what are we going to look at? I want to look at naked men, you know. As opposed, like, not that I don't like looking at naked women, but also like, you know, I like a bow. So like, just <laughs> let's just take a look at it all. Um, so this is like right on the cusp of this uh, and, and getting into what is called the golden age of porn, which doing searches, I did not find anything about it other than Wikipedia. Um, so I really hope this information is correct. And it's it, very frustrating that I can't find anything else on it. But uh, it was from 1969 to 1984. Andy Warhol created uh, the Blue Movie, or also called, also known as Fuck. And Bill Osco created Mona. And these were two movies that depicted explicit sex and received wide, like a wide theatrical release. So. This is be those two movies are basically w what started, um, po like pornography, I guess to to like, call uh, it in, in that its, sense. Like, modern. In yeah, in its modern time, okay. yeah, yeah. Uh, so obviously, then because like we can't forget about Deep Throat that came out in 1972, and other ones like Behind the Green Door, Devil and Miss Jones, Debbie Does Dallas. Debbie Does Dallas, absolutely. Um, and then when the 80s and 90s came is when we got into VHSs and DVDs. And that is when stores started coming up and being able to buy, like, the, like buy and rent. and Yes, yeah. yes, absolutely. Um, and then in 1990s, uh, or yeah, that, that, and, and that's also when they were able to become mass produced, right? Uh, when VHSs and DVDs became a thing. Um, so then again, with the invention of technology in the nineties, the internet was invented 
And so was internet porn. Oh, oh, oh. Can I can I interject while we're Do talking yeah. about adult video stores? Oh, yes, of course. Yes, when Mrs. Richard Bigley and I had started uh, dating, we had a uh, friend, there was a, a friend of, of Mrs. Richard Bigley, uh, who wanted to kick it old school despite having ample pornography on the internet and everything else. Uh, wanted to kick it old school and go rent a, a movie from an adult video store. Yeah. And it was really kind of funny because we were going through. They selected whatever it is that they were going to watch. And then we got to the front of the uh, you know, front counter or whatever to, to rent out this movie. Mm-hmm. And the clerk's like, okay, so can we get your membership card? And then they stopped and they were like, membership card and it's like yeah you rent a movie you need a membership card and and so mrs richard bigley and her friend are just like kind of flabbergasted looking like well do do i really want to give them all my information to rent a movie yeah and uh well it was funny because i'm like here and i reach into my wallet and pull my card out (laughs) you had a membership card (laughs) and both of them just kind of looked and uh the the clerk's like well, this doesn't appear to have been active um, for, for quite some time. You know, or there, there's been no activity on your account for quite some time, sir, <laughs> you're like, or whatever. You're like, thanks, buddy. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, thanks, <laughs> thanks, buddy. Thank you. You know, and uh, yeah, so shout out to you if, you, if you're listening to that. But uh, yeah, it was, I figured that was a good story for this. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Yeah. And you know what? I remember listening to, like, Howard Stern, um... Uh, maybe like five or so years ago and he was saying how porn pornography vhs's are the like huge sellers back then like even like five six years ago like that is how people prefer to watch their pornography if they're not doing it on the internet they wanted a vhs of it well i mean in today's modern era you've got you know, like, like like you can stream high definition or 4K mm-hmm. pornography on the internet with a fairly modest internet connection, and so like the only thing that's there's not a whole lot of it on Blu-ray, you know, or not a lot of it on 4K or not, you know, yeah. in terms of like physical media, because right. it's just so much easier to record it digitally, release it on the internet, and stream it than it right. is to. So, so I mean, I think that's why still VHS is is popular because, you know, if, if you're going to get the physical media, that's probably the only physical media that that is going to exist of that film. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and uh, and you know, just to just to wrap it up quickly before I go on another thing, um, it is the most profitable industry, and in. And it is definitely one of the most highly searched uh, things to be out there searching pornography. And um, a, a, a good thing about it is that it actually gives you access to a diverse taste in whatever kind of um, what it, what, whatever you're thinking about. Oh, I, I want to look at, you know, hentai. Let's see, is this is, <laughs> is this something I'm into? Or, you know, I want uh, amateur or I want... Um, Cake I farts. Cake farts, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so that. <laughs> um, but did you ever watch this movie? I wish... Okay, I'm going to try and remember what it is. But it was a movie about, and just speaking of, like, technology, right? And just knowing that we have um, those, like, 3D... What are those things when you wear, like, the full visor over your eye? Virtual reality? Yeah. So it was talking about virtual reality porn. Mm -hmm. And it made me think of... I was just thinking, like, oh, man, this movie is going to come real because, like, we have this now. Uh, So it was talking about you put on these... It was like a head cap, basically, with like, you know, like wires with little um, electrodes that you would stick on Mm. your head and you would watch uh, a pornography, but you'd be able to feel everything that that person is feeling. 
Um, and then it got really, tw- yeah. So it, w- it was basically a way to like experience pornography in a different way. But then obviously it got twisted and somebody went around and they were like murdering people and videoing it and, and using mm-hmm. that technology. So then the people would like, so then they were trying to figure out like, who's the killer? Because, you know, yeah. Yeah. So I wish I remembered the name of that movie, but I don't. <laughs> Well, that, that's actually an interesting thing, that whole idea of like this immersion into the experience, um, because there there is 3D porn, like, you know, like how you can go get your like 3D copy of the Avengers or whatever. You can like... You can get 3D porn or porn that's like stereoscopically recorded yeah. that you put your, you know, your glasses on and sit and watch the screen and, wow. you know... Co- comes out at you uh, actually it's kind of funny um for the classic that the uh, movie ghostbusters is yeah uh, it's never seen a 3d release however the pornographic parody of ghostbusters what's it called i think it's probably just like not ghostbusters uh, <laughs> I hope it's I, and I, something yes! like that. It's got yes! Ron, Ron that Jeremy be, has a cameo in it. Of course. But uh yeah, it it's, God, he'd be he'd be slimer. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it it received a th- it it was filmed and shot in 3D, so it's a 3D pornographic film. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I saw um <laughs> the only movie I've ever seen Ron Jeremy in is a movie where these group of people go up into the ski hills and they're gonna film this um <laughs> they're gonna film a porn and and Ron Jeremy's dick falls off and <laughs> starts murdering the people on the set <laughs> oh my gosh it's it's so uh, it's it's so over the top but yeah that's the only movie I have ever watched <laughs> Ron Jeremy in uh yeah, um, also I wanted to shout out to the Kama Sutra too uh, because I was like, man, that thing's been around forever. So like, what is it? Well, technically it was not published until 1883. So uh, the Kama Sutra is from India and it is, and I'm going to mispronounce this as well and I apologize. Um, it is Vat, Vatsuyana, Vat, Vatsuyana. Okay. So the Kama Sutra um, by Vatsuyana, uh, who was a philosopher, created this manual for sex. But other than as well known as having various sex positions, it also talked about the nature of love and finding a life partner and how to maintain it. But it didn't actually get published until 1883. Hmm. I tried to find out... um, when Vatsuyana was born or, or around, and I couldn't find any information on that. Um, I also, it also said that the Kama Sutra was way earlier than 1883, but that is just when it was actually published. Uh. Yeah. And uh, if you're interested in looking up any of these like photos that I'm talking about, because we aren't going to be able to really post them, I'm going to try and find the the more tame ones and hopefully ones that don't show too, too much uh, and see if I'm able to post it and not have our site shut down. But uh, it is called the erotica bibliophile dot com. And that will go up so you can uh, you can click it and check it out. And um, that's all I have other than, oh, my God, of course. That's not all I have. I'm sorry. Um, but wait, there's <laughs> more. <laughs> there's, yeah, I just wanted to bring up, um, we're not going to, I really just wanted to talk about the history of it. But I don't want to go, do it without at least touching on some of the issues about porn. So the issues with porn is that it can be, degrading to certain types of people um it can also just kind of promote violence in uh in acts of sexuality um it there's a concern it increases sex crimes it creates unrealistic ideals uh on how someone is supposed to be how someone's supposed to act how someone's supposed to last what that's supposed to look like, what genitalia is supposed to look like, etc. And it promotes I- uh, dumb ideals for people in general. What's masculine, what's feminine, these binaries that happen. 
Oh, and the fetishization of a number of different, you know, things that people identify as. Yeah, absolutely. And we're going to get into another episode about that. But pornography is just in just a general title. You can go. I think I gave Richard like three or four ideas. And I said, let's do an episode on this. And he goes, no, let's make each one of these an episode because it's going to be four hours long if we don't. <laughs> so that this is the start of uh, part one of uh, pornography analysis. <laughs> I'm not sure when part two or any of the other parts will come out, but stay tuned. Keep that just listening. Means, that's right. Keep listening and you'll find out. And subscribe to the Patreon. Yeah. And follow us on Facebook We're gonna have and tell your friends. <laughs> Don't tell all your friends. Give us five stars because, you know, we need it. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, so if there's anything you would like to add, we want to hear um, anonymous love, sex, relationship stories. Um, funny, sad, um, insane, in the membrane. Uh, we also Or insane clown posse if you're into that. <laughs> And uh, also, if you have any any corrections, you have definitely something that I'm mispronouncing <laughs> in this episode, please let me know. <laughs> <laughs> and hit me up at stone at sexwithstone.tk. And Richard at sexwithstone.tk. Yeah, uh, we're on Facebook, Sex with Stone. We're on Twitter, Sex with Stone Pod. Uh, Instagram, Official Sex with Stone. And also our Patreon account, which is <gasps> Sex with Stone. And that's it. Oh, thank you. Do you do any doodling, dude? Do you? Hey, hey, dude. Do you do any doodling, dude? I do not do any doodling, dude. Et. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But hey. He wrote our song, and I appreciate that, and him as a person. So thank you so much, Purvis Blue. And with that, have a consensual week. Bye. <laughs>